Hello and welcome back to World 360. You may recall that in mid-2019, social media was flooded with the hashtag Blue for Sudan, with messages raising awareness about the violence in the East African country. At the time, Sudan was witnessing mass protests against a transitional military government that was put in place two months after autocrat Omar al-Bashir was overthrown. Overthrowing Bashir wasn't enough people wanted democracy. Fast forward to 2020. A civilian transitional government under a man called Abdullah Hamdok was installed and in July that year, things started to look up. The fragile civilian government introduced a host of measures intended to speed up reform, including criminalizing female genital mutilation and allowing non-Muslims to drink alcohol. It was a big step after decades of hardline Islamist policies. But today, Sudan finds itself back to square one, thanks to a military coup in October 2021, led by Army Chief Abdel Fattah al-Burhan. Anti-military protests have continued in the troubled African country since October, and Burhan's crackdown has killed nearly 90 civilians so far. What's interesting, though, is that the military government reinstated Hamdok as PM in November 2021, and he obliged, fearing his refusal might trigger more violence. But in January this year, after being unable to nominate a government in a deal with the military, Hamdok stepped down, triggering further upheaval in the country. Now Al-Burhan is back in charge. So why are we talking about Sudan today? Mainly for two reasons. One, we see a country come so close yet so far to democracy. And two, because it is arguably in worse shape than it was before, with its military leader now making foreign visits to shore up economic assistance. Economic assistance certainly is the need of the hour, as Sudan is a country heavily dependent on foreign aid and investment. Since October, however, Sudanese people have been facing worse shortages in basic goods, as well as new taxes and steep price hikes on fuel and food. Electricity prices have also reportedly jumped 500%. This is not only due to the existing instability in Sudan, but also due to the US, World Bank and IMF deciding to suspend aid to the impoverished country in response to the coup last October. Over the past two weeks, senior military officials from Sudan, including Al-Burhan himself, have made two important trips to Russia and the UAE seeking economic assistance. On 9th March, in his first official overseas visit, Al-Burhan visited the Crown Prince in the UAE, during which there was an emphasis on economic aspects, considering it as the focus of Sudan's interest at this stage, said the Junta in a statement. The Junta also mentioned that the UAE agreed to establish economic partnerships in the areas of roads, ports, railways and military cooperation too. Let's not forget that in November last year, a month after the coup, the US, the UK, Saudi Arabia and the UAE released a joint statement urging the Junta in Sudan to restore a genuine civil-military partnership so that the country can get back on track to a transition into democracy. But while the US continues to issue hardline measures and sanctions on Sudan, most recently on the country's police, the UAE appears to be offering the junta a helping hand. In late February, just when the war in Ukraine was getting started, a group of senior military officials from Sudan, including the deputy head of Sudan's ruling council, visited Moscow. Keep in mind that Russia is involved in Sudan's gold sector and was also due to send a shipment of wheat to the country in January, Sputnik News had reported. And like the UAE, Russia didn't outright condemn the October coup. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov attributed the instability to destabilizing actions by Western powers, accusing them of enforcing democracy on the African country. Even at the UN, Russia said, it's hard to say whether it's a coup or not. What's also worrying are reports that the notorious private military firm Wagner Group has deployed mercenaries in Sudan. But perhaps what is Russia's main angle with Sudan is the prospects of constructing a naval base in the strategic port Sudan along the Red Sea coast. In November 2020, Moscow announced plans to construct the naval base, which would alleviate pressure on Russia's naval base in Tartu on Syria's Mediterranean coast and allow Russia to play a greater role in anti-piracy missions in the Indian Ocean, writes Samuel Ramani, a DPhil candidate in international relations at St. Anthony's College at Oxford University. 
There were fears that the coup in Sudan would delay the construction of the naval base. But in November 2021, Al-Burhan said Sudan is committed to the Port Sudan base agreement and that there are still some faults that have to be remedied. Only time will tell if Al-Burhan will be able to shore up the economic assistance his country so desperately needs before the people's frustration grows out of control and protests swell even more. Thank you so much for watching. This is Pia Krishnkuti for The Print. Do subscribe to The Print.in and follow us on social media.